In the chapter material this week, we're focusing on liabilities. Liabilities represents the money that we owe to another party, whether a bank or if we're borrowing money for whatever reason. The chapter also introduces this concept of the time value of money. There's no better example of this than to consider a loan where we are borrowing money and we're paying this back with both principal and interest. This is actually very similar to what we would see in a mortgage situation where it's principal and interest. And what we're going to see is that the principal and the interest component of a payment actually changes depending upon the amount that remains open. So let's look at this situation here. We'll explain the process. So what we're looking at is Acne Company is borrowing $24,000 and agrees to pay 5% on a two-year installment loan with the bank. Payments of $1,052.91 are due at the end of each month. And the question becomes is how much interest should be recorded for the first month. Now I'm going to expand this discussion a little bit more and introduce a couple of concepts that we see in Excel. The first thing that I want to point out is anytime you see an interest rate, the interest rate is always recorded or reported as an annual interest rate and let's otherwise uh, note it. So in this case what we're looking at is 5% and we can assume that this 5% interest is annual but at the same time we're making payments on a monthly basis. So it's a two-year loan which means that it's 24 months so I have the payment schedule here on the left side. So let's look at this in terms of what's taking place. So you notice that it identifies the payment of $1,052.91. So the question becomes is how do we actually get to that payment. Well, we're basically looking at a present value calculation. Again, we are incorporating the, uh, the time value of money. So within this present value calculation, what we want to find out is what is the payment. So in Excel, we have a couple of formula functions that will help us in terms of calculating this. So in the formula bar, we're going to go equals and then we're looking for payment which is PMT and you notice that uh, the formulas are, are popping up here and then we put an inside parenthesis. Now if we go to the function tool what we're going to see is we're going to be looking at the variables. So what are the variables in this case? So we're looking at the rate, the number of periods, the present value, the present value is how much we are borrowing, and then there's two other uh, calculations here, which is a future value as well as type. Now, in this case, we're going to leave these two blank because there is no balloon payment at the end of the period. And in addition, because we are completing the payments at the end of each period, the default is zero for the type. The only time this is a one is when the payments are made at the beginning of the period, which is what you see in a lease. But this is borrowing money, so this is going to be at the end of the period. So let's look at this. So you notice that it is 5%. However, the issue becomes is the payments are made every month. So the amount of interest per period is 5% divided by 12. The number of period is two years times 12 months. So the number of periods is going to be 24. The present value is $24,000. Given the fact that we owe that money, we're going to put a negative sign in front of this. So we're going to have minus 24,000. And again, there's no balloon payment at the end and the type is going to be zero, but we can leave this blank. So what we're coming up with, and it's going to show up in the formula tool here, is that the payments are 
$1,052.91. And uh, what we do is we round this up to this amount here. So the question, the first question is, how do we get to the $1,052.91? We get this through the payment function, which essentially is a function embedded in the uh, the present value calculations uh, that we're used to. And the formula that we're using in Excel is what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate the payment. So again, it is 5% divided by 12 because we want to capture the amount of interest for that single period. The number of periods in PER is 24. It's a two year loan and we're making monthly payments. And then the amount that we owe, that we're going to owe is going to be $24,000. So the payment again is $1,052.91. So let's look at our, we're basically looking at an annuity table here where we are making a payment and that payment includes both principal and interest. And we have a declining balance within the payment because our payment includes these two elements. So we start off with owing $24,000. So what did we say our payment is? Well, our payment is $1,052.91. So we now have this. So the question becomes is how much is interest and how much is principal? So what we want to do is we want to calculate the interest and we're calculating the interest on the remaining balance. So the remaining balance here is $24,000. So we're going to calculate $24,000 times 5% divided by 12. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to capture the amount of interest for that one month period. We hit OK. And you notice that the interest is $100. So we've actually identified $100 in this calculation which is the first question that we need to, to answer. Okay, so let's continue on with this. So the issue then becomes is if the interest is $100, how much is the principal? How much of the balance are we paying off during this first month? So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the payment minus the interest and this is $952.91. So we actually are paying down the principal by $952.91. So to get to the second month, what we're looking at is we're looking at $24,000 minus the principal that we paid, which brings us a balance of $23,047.09. So at the end of the first payment, we now owe $23,047 and some change. Okay, now we can then uh, bring this down in terms of what is the payment. The payment stays the same. So you notice that the payment is the same every month. However, the interest is going to change because the interest is now not um, a... Uh, 5% divided by 12 times 24,000, but it's going to be the same amount times $23,047. So we can actually just bring this down here and if we look at this, just to make sure that we've got this correct. So it's $23,047.09 times 5% divided by 12. Okay, now the principal, we can drag this down and you notice now the principal, the part of the payment that is associated with the principal actually increases. Okay, now what are we going to do now? So if we highlight these three cells and drag this down to the 24 months, what we should see, I'm going to drag this down also, what we should see is that at the end of the period, and we can actually go to, so as of 
the 25th month, which is uh, the end of the end of the payment period, we owe zero. So we don't owe anything. So what we're what we're looking at here is that every payment stays the same. However, the component of this payment that is related to interest decreases every month, and the component of the payment that is related to a principal reduction increases every month, such that at the end, the amount that we owe in the last payment represents the amount of the principal that we're paying. So we're now going to a balance of zero. And you can see here that the balance goes down in the same uh, level as the principal is paid um, as, as, as positive. Okay, so this essentially then becomes our annuity table in relationship to the balance and the payments. Now let's just very briefly go through the payments that we make and go through the journal entries. So let's look at the, the initial journal entry. So the initial journal entry is that we are borrowing $24,000. So if we're borrowing $24,000, we're going to receive cash. So the cash is going to be our $24,000. And that's going to be a debit because we are receiving the cash. Now let's look at the uh, credit in this case, the credit is going to be a note payable. Okay, so the note payable is going to be the exact same thing of $24,000. Now, let's look at the next payment, or the first payment. And the first payment, you notice that we are making a payment of $1,052.91. And there's going to be interest, and there's going to be a principal reduction now the principal reduction is going to be a debit to notes payable. So we now have notes payable as a debit. And notes payable is going to decrease by $952.91. So if we did a T account, the credit would start off with $24,000 and then the debits would be a series of these items that uh, represent the principal. Okay, now what else do we have? Well, we have interest and interest expense. The interest expense is going to be the interest that we see over here. And then finally, the credit is cash because we're making a payment. Okay, so what is the... the the credit, the credit is going to be the actual payment. So this is our first payment. This is the initial borrowing. And what we're doing here is we're going through this process in terms of setting up the note payable and then incrementally paying off that note payable because our payment is going to be both principal and interest. I hope this helps. I thank you very much for your participation in this class, and I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you.